Hello everyone, welcome to GGN. This is part two of this news bulletin for today. Thank you for joining me. My website's ggnonline.com and all the headlines and links will be posted in YouTube's video description, so check them out. All right, I'm sure there's there will be people that will be offended by that first video, but um, that's how the agenda is, the social engineering agenda. It's basically controlled by uh, a few minority of white, really rich white people. Um, the irony is that um, there is a type of genocide, or at least social genocide, is being carried out against people with European ancestry. And um, so I do agree somewhat with that video, and of course it got like 50 dislikes. Well, that's because people are brainwashed and they're too scared to think for themselves. So it says here, Army tries rooting out white supremacists. So hate group have long used... U.S. military for weapons training. So now all of a sudden they're coming out with this um, tying uh, this new phenomenon they call uh, Rahoa. I don't even know how it's pronounced. I never heard of it. I was in the Marine Corps. I, I never heard of this before. But this racial holy war. If it's anything like the holy war, the jihad that we've heard after 9-11, it's probably complete uh, fabrication by intelligence agencies and uh, think tanks. Uh, basically run and owned by uh, these very rich white eugenicists who don't like black people by the way that's 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 the thing they hate everybody except for themselves so in this one they call it white supremacists so anything that has to do with white people being proud to be white they're all of a sudden better than everybody else no that's the eugenicists that are su the supremacists you see how they play that little mind game yeah, it says here, and even though the military banned racial extremists in 1986, there was a big thing in the 80s, um, the clamping down of um, this type of stuff like Ruby Ridge and all that, although some slipped through the cracks. So that means we have to look out for Whitey in the military. They could all be terrorists, a bunch of neo-Nazis. And, and the funny thing about this is the intelligence community, they disseminate this bullshit propaganda, disinformation, to these agencies, including the government, uh, the, the, the military and that, and then just, of course, they buy it and they do these PowerPoint presentations and all these white people are in the military are going to be sitting there watching this feeling, hmm, I'm not a racist, you know, um, maybe I am, right? So it says here that these neo-Nazis encourage follower, followers to enlist in the Army and Marine Corps to acquire the skills to overthrow what some call the Zionist-occupied government. Now, see, they know that people out there uh, believe in this because they know that it's true that we're living in a Zionist occupied territory so when they put this out there mainstream media sees it and they're just like oh my god um, you know if they were back in the 40s they'd be you know taking part in the Holocaust so I mean they've got they've got a um, and this all comes of course this all comes after the US Army soldier Wade Page opened fire in the Sikh temple which is probably a psychological operation carried out so it doesn't just have to do with um, military members inside the military, but also veterans. So this was about cracking down on veterans. Another, another crazy thing is the military bans racial extremists. So, but at the same time, they push this social uh, sexual revolution inside the military, which actually, like I've mentioned this before, is not good for team work, right? But they know that. So like I said before, uh, it's a Zionist or a communist type tactic that is used. They use social, sexual revolution, cultural revolution, exploit people's passions in order to uh, basically bring about their change and maintain their uh, control over people, over society, and further infiltrate them. Next up, we have Hate Crimes Task Force. Did you know there was a task force for hate crimes? Well, no, it all comes from the, what... Um, Anti-Defamation League, the ACLU, it's all Zionist uh, fronts is what it is. So if you say anything, uh, if you speak your mind, then you are anti-Semitic. So it says here that NYPD probing hate crime after bacon found at Staten Island Ramadan site. Followers of Islam are forbidden to eat pork. Even before the bacon was located, someone left offensive messages on the organization's website. So, yeah, that was in New York. And they also have a um, hate crime task force out in California, so coast to coast. They got it covered. Possible extremist connection to Louisiana police. That's right. Uh, we heard about this. The two Louisiana sheriff's deputies were killed on Thursday. Two separate but related incidents 
says one or more of the suspects and killings may have been tied to extremism. They're talking about any anything that is outside this agenda is called extremist. So just, you know, so I'm sure you're already aware of that. So they're talking about the, quote, uh, sovereigns. The government calls them sovereign citizens, um, which is an incorrect term. They also say they're anti-government. Well, they're not out to take down the government. They just want to be left alone, and they feel that the government's authority over them is illegitimate. But what I find interesting down here is Alex Jones jumped on this right away. I do think, I do think that he's a shill. I, I mean, do I know for sure? Could I prove it? No. Um, but it says here, I do know that I do have a feeling that his goal is to get people to get violent and stuff like that. In particular, on MySpace profile, Smith lists as either heroes or people he'd like to meet. Alex Jones, the Texas-based, conspiracy-oriented, and anti-government radio talk show host. Again, Randy Weaver, the white supremacist at the center of the Ruby Ridge standoff or massacre, whatever you want to call it. So they're cracking down on these individuals that don't want to be part of the system anymore and calling them extremists and prone to be violent. That's what they do. They link violence to it. Uh, but what I found interesting was the cover of this magazine uh, by Infowars that they just came out recently with. And it's interesting because they always talk about Nazis, 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 but they never talk about the communists, do they? About the millions that were killed by their own government system and how it never really went away. And they always use the Reichstag, right? Rome burned. Will we? And I never got that until just in the past couple of years. Why does Alex Jones always associate the United States with Rome? Who the fuck said we wanted to be Rome? You know what I mean? So he's talking about the empire. Uh, is Rome going to go down? Are we going to go down? The empire going to go down? So here's the thing of the Federal Reserve, but I just saw, you know, like the flames and this, and it kind of looks like the burning of the Reichstag, right? And they go in there and they talk about, at the bottom here, mentioning, uh, or not here, but I've seen it before. It's about uh, false flags, terrorist attacks. And they always use the Reichstag as a good example. And actually probing into that further doesn't make any sense that the uh, Nazi party would burn down the Reichstag. They had the majority of people on their side. They were just about to be democratically elected in. Why would they do that? That doesn't make any sense. So, no, I'm not a Nazi. The Nazis don't exist. The National Socialist German Party does not exist anymore, so you can't be labeled a Nazi. And it doesn't apply to today. But I do think that there's something behind Alex Jones. And, um, and it says here, Ruby Ridge is history, but the mindset that led to Ruby Ridge is thriving. They moved to the Pacific Northwest, a Midwestern couple, where they had planned to live in as self-sufficiently as possible. Now, this is a this is a big movement kind of that was going on. I mean, it wasn't necessarily a organized movement, but there was a lot of people. I asked my mom about this uh, about in the 70s and then you got the Waltons and um, uh, Foxfire books along with, you know, the show Little House on the Prairie, but the Foxfire books about Appalachian Mountain survival and stuff like that. So it was definitely a consensus. People wanted to go back to the land. That was in the 70s and in the 80s. And they came from the Midwest, so it's a pretty good kind of template for a lot of Americans. So they, the good thing about the government and the powers that be, they always like to use the government to uh, go on the preemptive attack of these individuals before they set some kind of trend. So the ATF, yeah, most of you already know, entrapped Randy on a minor weapons violation, offered him a deal. The charge would be dismissed if he became an informant in a white separatist circle. Instead, we were skipped or missed his trial and moved his family to a cabin in the wilderness. So after shooting their family dog, uh, the kid basically uh, shot and then ran away. He was shot in the back. FBI snipers went on to wound both Randy and Harris, and one of the sharpshooters killed Vicky, his wife, I guess, firing a bullet into her head while she held the couple's 10-year-old daughter. And I'm not a practicing Christian or anything. I have my own views and stuff like that, so I'm not preaching religion here. But um, there's many, there's plenty of people in America that do, and um, so I'll cover this because it is an issue. Uh, Christianity and gun owners in the crosshairs, chilling tactic exposed. So if you're an outspoken Christian in America, you need to be concerned. It says and if you happen to be a gun owner, you need to be very concerned. And if you're a Christian gun owner who disagrees with the progressive anti-Christian agenda in America and have a platform to inform others, you better believe that you're under intense scrutiny. So he says, sounds like paranoid propaganda. Read on. And just to sum it up, this guy in uh, Pennsylvania got a call from Officer Steve from the police department. He said he was calling just to check up on him and see if he was all right. And then he actually showed up on his porch and called him again. They made the mistake of stepping outside his house. 
And it says here, like Bill Cooper, who was shot by the feds on his front doorstep after basically predicting it a year prior, the officer told Jason that the Scranton Police Department received a telephone call from a, quote, friend living in New York City who claimed to be concerned about his mental health. So you need to come with us. And Christianity, the medical diagnosis of psychosis. So, yeah, he was locked up because of his religious beliefs. And the government's getting ready for you. They're stocking up on ammunition. They just did it again, another armor-piercing bullets and stuff like that. And that's not even the gadgets that they have for black ops and all that. Um, and all the drones they're going to be releasing right in time as the economy gets, uh, you know, goes down further. Soldier protection system, head protection. So the army is basically getting a bunch of riot gear. So I wonder what for what? For urban, urban warfare, civil unrest. So this is America. I let my four kids play outside on a sunny Saturday, and the cops wrote up a report. It was not after dark. It was 4 p.m. on a Saturday. Her husband walked out to see what was going on. The police officer even wrote up a report stating that the children were left outside unsupervised. So it's all about uh, micromanaging. And um, this is what they want. This is what they want. Totally weird baby products. So it's uh, basically a harness. They call it like the monkey harness or something like that at Walmart. So the social engineers don't want traditional family values. They want this. They want you to be raising pets. It says here, man fights to keep wife's body in front yard. He faces off against the Alabama health officials. He was ordered to remove the body from his gravesite. Says, good lord, they've raised pigs in their yard. There are horses out the road there. They've got other grave sites here all over the place. Davis said 73, and there shouldn't have been a problem. So the health officials are against them. It's in a town of 2,600. They worry that others will follow suit. So the, there you go, trendsetters, damaging property values <laughs> and raise, respecting the dead, right? Raising issues about long-term care. Yeah, how about those uh, veterans, those bodies that were of Air Force and that, that were thrown in the fucking dumpster? How about that? Let's talk about fragmenting and, and, and breaking up uh, the cohesiveness of the military, which is usually men. It says here, battle-tested female war vets run for Congress. So this is something out of the AP, so it's coming from, from the uh, powers that be. She flew a warthog over Iraq. Another was part of the infantry medical operation in Baghdad. It says, all our war veterans aiming to serve in Congress. All reflect an evolving U.S. military. All are female. What about this veteran that was actually detained after a Facebook post about the government? Oh, he was involuntarily detained for psychological, uh, psychiatric evaluation. Yeah, did you hear about in July, gay troops were okay to march at the parade in uniform for the first time. And Guy sues Napolitano for gender discrimination, says another female official created a frat house atmosphere hostile to men. I just covered this, remember? It says here, DHS, gay pride tranny speaker on agents, hostile work environment for straights had the LGBT uh, basically website and the lesbianic women. So it's pretty scary times, man, when you can be involuntarily detained for psychiatric evaluation for what you say. But it's not surprising because the U.S. slipped to 47th in the Press Freedom Index. Thank you.